So today we're looking at forgiveness. Okay, this might be another um, tough subject to talk about. Um, I don't know. Um, so with forgiveness, um, we're, you know, dealing with uh, usually the traditional uh, um, definition of the forgiveness is that we're dealing with some sort of dark emotion or dark reality that has hit upon us some sort of injustice. And it's you, you're, you're the person that needs to forgive. Okay. Um, when I was taught, you know, back in Catholic school, so I went to Catholic school when I was a, a young kid, um, you know, it was a sacrament of reconciliation. It was kind of not like that. Because the way they taught us was that if we did something wrong, um, we go and get penance, right? We go to the confession box and confess our sins. Um, well, I don't know if kids can really understand what forgiveness is about because forgiveness is about um, something that has happened to you, something wrong that's happened to you, and you're, you're asked to forgive. You're asked to um, kind of let go of that feeling, and um, that's tough to do. That's tough to do with anything. So, and in sports, it's really not about injustice. Uh, it could be, but it could also mostly about mistakes, that mistakes that happen in um, tennis and sports, okay? So I'll go ahead and start the reading here of this chapter, um, Forgive. Forgive. During the ninth inning of game seven of the 2014 World Series, San Francisco Giants center fielder Gregor Blanco made a spectacular error that made every San Francisco Giant fan around the world gasp in sheer disbelief. With only one out left to capture a World Series championship title, Blanco committed a disastrous fielding mistake that may have tied the game and given the title to the Kansas City Royals. Then the next batter came up and Madison Bumgarner pitched a very cool and collected masterpiece that led to the final out. San Francisco Giants won the 2014 World Series. Of course, Madison Bumgarner's pitching prowess was self-evident here. What is not so evident and what should be recognized was Bumgarner's ability to forgive his teammates and pitch effectively at the most crucial part of the series. In the most pressure-packed situation of a game, an athlete must have a clear mind in order to perform. If Bumgarner had not given, had not forgiven and let resentment fester, he would have easily become distracted and the game would, could have slipped away then and there. Bumgarner shows us that the power of forgiveness can literally win you championships. What is forgiveness? The traditional definition of forgiveness means to stop feeling angry or resentful toward the person who has wronged you. However, in sports, this traditional definition does not particularly apply. Teammates don't exactly wrong you, but they do commit mistakes and they do have flaws. What we need to do is expand the definition of forgiveness to include mistakes, flaws, and the imperfections of simply being human. Even though athletes always strive for perfection, the truth is that perfection can never be attained. Your teammates will screw up. You will screw up. The athlete must learn to forgive consistently. Forgiveness is not a one-time event. Forgiveness is a practice. Without forgiveness, bitterness will slowly fester and mitigate any chance for an athlete to reach his or her true potential. It is, it's, it's especially important for tennis players to learn to forgive. Errors happen all the time in tennis, and if you don't forgive yourself, you will not have the ability to focus on the next shot. In doubles, it's vital to continually forgive your teammate. If you start being resentful towards your teammate, errors will crop up even more. You will lose the ability to problem solve, and your teammate may lose interest in playing altogether. Forgiveness will give you the space to create energy, excitement, and freedom regardless of what is happening on the court. Learn to forgive. The weak can never forgive. Forgiveness is the attribute of the strong. Mahatma Gandhi. 
I want to bring it up for discussion. Um, and here's my question. Have you ever forgave someone or been forgiven by someone? Tell us about that experience. So this could be a sporting situation, a uh, sporting event, or something in your personal life where you forgave someone. Something uh, was done wrong to you uh, and you forgave them or you were forgiven. Maybe you did something wrong and you were forgiven by somebody. Okay, um, can you tell us that experience? Um, I remember volleyball. Mm -hmm. I went up for a hit and then um, I basically got the ball. I hit, I hit the ball towards the my teammate's face really bad. Mm -hmm. And then uh, his face was like hella red. Wow. And then he, he knocked down to the floor. And then uh, after the the point, after we won the point, I was just like, hey, man, hey, man my bad. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Oh, wow. So was this your opponent or a teammate? Uh, well, I have it a couple of times. Opponents, teammates. Okay. And you just straight up hit him in the face. Did it, did it look like it hurt pretty bad? Yeah, there was this one time. Uh, one, I think it was one of my opponents where he hit glasses and then his glasses came off. Oh, wow. That's pretty brutal. I didn't know. Um, yeah, that, that makes sense. In volleyball, you know, these things could happen, right? Especially you're spiking the ball really hard. Um, so what what they so what did he say? Um after that, was he kind of uh looking at you bad? Um like what was his reaction? Well, for the opponents, they did look at me bad because it was just like, dude, come on. And then my uh -huh. teammates were just like, oh, just joking around. Okay, so so the opponents kind of kind of got back at you? Is that what uh, you said? Not really. They couldn't really do anything because the ref was there and then they had to get handled by their coach. But, okay. I mean, they knew their plays, I guess. Okay. So you said sorry, and did, did he actually say something back, like um, it's okay or anything like that? Um, they said it was just all good. It's all good. Okay. Can you tell like it was just, um, he just said it or was there a real truth behind it? Like, you know, it's all good. You well, know, don't, don't feel bad. Sometimes I just feel like they just say it just to say it. Uh huh. And then just walk away. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. That's part of the game. Um, you know, in tennis, you actually can peg a someone, um, and I've done, I've done that many times. Uh, you know, I, I've been hit pretty hard. Uh, and uh, usually in that moment, you feel like, ah, oh, this, you know, this guy just hit me or something. And, uh, but if I hit a person, I, I truly genuinely feel bad. I'm probably not aiming directly at the person's face or body. I'm trying to win the point, right? And that's what you're probably trying to do too. Aaron, uh, you're just trying to win that point. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's, that's good. That's, you know, hopefully, um, he kind of forgave you on that, but, uh, the typical human reaction is that that resentment is kind of there and, um, you know, they might get back at you, right. They might get back at you and try to peg you as well. Um, so good. Any other, uh, experiences from, uh, all you other guys, uh, what, what happened? In your situation with that? Um, I'll share. Okay. Um, so in um, middle school, there was this girl, she was bullying me a lot and she'd always pick on me for little things mm -hmm. and like about my appearance and just whatever, constantly doing wow. stuff like that. Uh -huh. And um, and I felt, you know, inferior and I felt upset and I was around her every day at school um, and even after school during sports. And so I didn't look forward to going to school. I was always upset and like in tears and I thought something was wrong with me. And when I got into college, um, I went, she went to the same college as me and we played volleyball together. And then I realized that all those feelings I had towards her were affecting um, how I played on the volleyball team. And um, I decided to forgive her. And there was one incident 
where um, that um, girl made a mistake, but she never like apologized for it. And um, and she made it feel like it was my fault. Um, and people didn't understand that it was her fault until a lot later. So, you know, it was a lot of years. It took a lot of years for me to actually forgive her um, for all the things that she did to me. But, um, you know, forgiving her made it, uh, made it easier to play on a team with her in college. Well, definitely. So, yeah, that's a, that's a good move by you, Farah. Um, so what, after all this time, what made you forgive that person? It sounded like, uh, you know, I want to say she's like a really bad person, but, you know, these, these things do happen, right, with classmates or with your teammates. Um, but what, what motivated you to forgive that person and just let go? Um, because I didn't want to like continue to be afraid of that person and give them that like power and control, um, over, over me. And, um, I realized that I have, uh, better things to do in life, um, and to get better myself, um, than to let this person like hold me down and, I have these like negative thoughts in my head. So um, I decided to just make the best of it and uh, forgive her. And I, I hope that one day she would, uh, I was hoping one day she would like realize it and apologize to me, but she never did. So I just decided to um, let it go. No, oh, so that's, that's great, Farah. Um... So yeah, sometimes with forgiveness, uh, you don't re you don't require um, that uh, apology from that other person. Sometimes uh, you can just forgive outright, um, and that's really hard to do, especially when that resentment, that anger, is still within you. Um, but at some point, it's affecting you negatively, and you got to make that move. You got to make that uh, move to let go. So that's very good. That's very helpful. Um, that's a good experience, uh, Farah. Um, so anything else, uh, with your other experience, anyone else? Oh, sorry. Oh. I just wanted to yeah. add, um, that I did not only forgive her, but I forgave myself for like oh, wow. putting up with, um, yeah. that first and like, you know, taking it for so yeah. many years. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's really, that's even going deeper. Yeah. So you forgave her and then you forgave yourself for, letting that feeling kind of fester in inside of you. So that's good. So then that really took care of, hopefully that took care of all those, those negative feelings and negative thoughts. Um, you really sometimes have to go uh, and forgive your, whoever that person is and then yourself as well. That may be the next step. Okay. So thank you. Thanks Farah for, for sharing, sharing that. Um, Anyone else that want to share an experience? So that's pretty good. It's two good experiences there. Hey, coach. Yes. Um, I just wonder if you ever ever uh, forgave me for uh, practicing uh, Taekwondo on you and kicking you upside oh. the head. Oh, thanks for. <laughs> if you haven't, can I ask your uh, forgiveness for that? Oh, you didn't. What you didn't? What you didn't ask? You didn't. Yeah, can I ask your forgiveness for oh, that? Oh, you ask. Uh, yeah. Unless unless you already forgave me for it, coach. Huh. Yeah. So what happened? So my brother's a little bit older than me. It's like eight years older. And I don't know when that happened. I was like, what, 10? And you were 18 and you're, pra you're practicing Taekwondo on me, which is like a martial arts. And you, he wasn't supposed need, to kick my face. I need a, I need a, I need a oh. training partner. Sorry. Yeah, I need a training partner. I'm only 10 years old. And he, he kicked my face. It's supposed to be like a, you know, like a shadow swing. You're not supposed to hit me, but it was a direct hit to my face. And that's messed up. That is messed up. And, um, well, back then, I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't forgive you, uh, right? I was uh, pretty upset for, like, the whole day. Uh, um, and I do remember that. But 
Today, I forgive you for that. There's still a little, little, um, you know, something there. You shouldn't have done that, though. I don't, I don't know why you missed I, or you did you purposely kick me or? What? No, I, I just, I just miscalculated. No, that's a, that's a huge miscalculation, especially for, you know, you're kicking a ten-year-old kid in the face. That's sounds enough. like sounds sounds like you haven't forgiven me though. Yeah, uh, yeah. Totally. Yeah, I, I, so I, I do have a problem with that. I have to admit, I have a, I have a problem with that. It's kind of why I wrote this chapter. It's kind of, it's almost for myself, really, too. But oh, just I let forgive. Me, yeah, what's that? Just, just let me know what else I can do for you to totally no, that's forgive me. me. That's me. Okay. So, you know, I, I forgive you. That, that's done. That's what, when was that? Like 25 years ago? Okay. So, yeah. So, Thank you for sharing that, that experience. And I re now I remember that those, all those feelings are coming back now. All right. <laughs> Anything else? Any, anyone else? Well, you know, I, I want to share an experience. So um, this is um, in regards to college. Okay. So um, back when I was going to college, I hated college. Well, I, I pretty much hated school for the most part. Um, but um, I did not like college. I didn't like the, sis the system itself, like going to class and the whole setup where you had to um, listen to a lecture from a professor. Um, I didn't learn. I feel like I didn't learn anything. I didn't like any of my teachers. Um, the whole setup was messed up to be. Um, and uh, I don't like it. And I don't like having... You know, I, I feel like I have to go to college, but, um, and then, you know, I, I was also doing my business and I had an online business that was, uh, doing a lot better, um, at that time. And I decided to drop out. So I was, I was initially a college dropout. Okay. Um, and my business still, okay. It's working well, um, even up to now, but I thought, you know, many years later that, um, I should go finish my degree. Uh, um, but I couldn't do it with those same kind of feelings that I had with college. Okay. So, um, understandably college is not for everybody. Uh, you know, just going to class, trying to do all of these forms. Like when I had to change my major, I had to fill out like 10 different forms, go to a, go to different lines. It's just madness. I had to let that go. Um, want to check my connection and um and um that was tough to do and um i kind of forgave the college system of all its weaknesses and failures and um just the machinery of college i had to kind of forgive that um in order to pass my classes in order to enjoy some of my classes and ultimately finish my degree. Without that, I, I would not be here today. I wouldn't be like a college professor or coach. Um, um, without that, uh, I wouldn't get past it. I'd still be a college dropout. Okay, so that's, that's one of my experiences as far as uh, forgiveness. Uh, hey, for coach. Yeah? So you ended up like, um continuing with school and getting your master's and oh, so yeah. Like, yeah. did you like um just enjoy school from from that point on or or uh really just enjoyed the you know the academic experience or what really changed from that point on that you, you know you you went further oh uh, yeah so i i actually still have the same um feelings and thoughts about college, about the educational system. Um, but at the same time, I think most professors are doing their best. I believe most administrators are doing their best to provide a good education, um, a higher standard of education. We're all trying to do our best. And when you look at it that way, in a positive way, I think you will learn from any of your classes. You'll learn um, a lot. Okay, instead of having that resentment kind of block you out, if you still have the resentment, then you're not going to learn and you're not going to have a good time 
in college, obviously, you're not going to learn. So um, that's the thing. Um, you have to look at uh, the people that are teaching you um, and just the whole system itself. It's not perfect. It's like way far from perfect. I'll tell you this right now as a, uh, as faculty, as a professor, there's even more um, as, a, as a coach. There's more paperwork that you have to do. There's, um, there's just a lot of, it's a mess. There's politics involved. So, um, so I have to continually let that go. I have to let that go. That it's, there's a problem in the system, but at the same time, if I have to move forward, then I have to, um, I have to keep forgiving uh, in order to get to where I want and achieve things. Okay. So yeah, thank you. Thank you for that question, brother. Um, we'll go on to the next one. What is the next one? Okay, so let's go to strategies here on how to forgive. I kind of mentioned maybe a little bit, um, just a little bit about strategies. But so how do you forgive? How do we forgive? For instance, if our doubles partner is continually making mistakes, what are some of the strategies that we can do to help us better forgive our teammate? Okay, so some of us are uh, very hard to forgive. You can't just flip, flip a switch and like, oh, like my partner's making like 20 mistakes. Something was done wrong to me. I'll just forgive, you know, it's as simple as that. Um, no, it's not, it's not as simple as that. Um, what are some of the strategies that we can do to help us better forgive? What do we need to look at um, as far as our emotions and the other person? What can we do to better forgive, you think? Um, I think uh, like one strategy would be kind of like, um, if like your, if the doubles partners like keep on like making mistakes and like you can't really like forgive them, I think uh, kind of like, Think of like the golden rule and kind of like imagine like how would you feel in their situation so you kind of like try to like uh understand like from their position and maybe uh in a way like that will help you kind of forgive them because if you were the one that were, was making the mistakes and like you're not like doing it intentionally you're just trying your best i, I think it would be like um i think you'd want that forgiveness and you would you could um, kind of like show it to other people in a way, if that makes sense. Yeah, so that's perfect, Gabriel. Um, perfectly worded there. Uh, so yeah, you have to go into your teammate's shoes, basically. Say you, you, you were the one that made like 10 million mistakes on the tennis court. Um, you know, you would obviously feel bad. So you have to find that empathy for your teammate and to, to forgive. Because usually uh, your teammate is probably, you know, trying to do their best, their best effort. Um, so you have to uh, get in their shoes a little bit and, and find that. Um, so good. Thank you, Gabriel. Um, anything else? Any other strategies that we can do to help us better forgive? Um, I wanted to say give some positive affirmations. Um, like you know you've seen them at their best and worst so give them some encouragement like you know um you know keep going or you know just positive talk mm -hmm. so yeah that's perfect so you got to support them and give a lot of positive talk uh to your teammate um you just got to look at the positive qualities right of your teammate um yeah maybe that person's making unforced errors all the time, but maybe that person made some winners, made some good forehands, made some good backhands. Um, and actually, if you look at the positives, um, and if you're actually in a tennis match, uh, maybe you can have them perform more forehands in a way, and that will get you in a better position to win the match. So that can be totally helpful, just trying to support them and find positives for uh, your teammate. So that's very good. Thank you, Farah. Um, anything else? Any other strategies that you can think of on how to better forgive? Discuss it with them. Like... Discuss it with them? So, yeah, yeah that was uh, Naja. Was that you, Naja? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so 
Yeah, so maybe you just need to talk it out, uh, right? Cause, yeah, because like if you yeah. keep it, you keep it in heart, then it's going to yeah. be more not forgiving them, more like just keeping it, not letting it out. <laughs> yeah, totally. So that's that's huge. Yeah, if you keep it in to yourself, all this, uh, maybe maybe you are supportive, right? Like you're just saying things, right? You're just, oh, okay, that, that's okay, keep going. But then if it's still inside you, it's still inside your heart in some way, and you don't discuss it with them, you don't discuss these mistakes, maybe you, you, you're still not really forgiving that person, right? So that's really excellent point, Naja. I haven't really thought about that. So yeah, talk it out with your teammate, talk it out with whoever um, you have problems with, and maybe you could find some sort of understanding and find that forgiveness. Maybe both of you will forgive each other. Okay, with that. So yeah. That's good. Excellent. <laughs> um, any anyone else with um some good strategies on on this? Yeah, I was gonna say um you know like uh, helping your partner to like for like forgive themselves in a sense or just forget what they did. That way you can move on with the next point or whatever you guys are trying to do. Because I find that like when one partner is consistently messing up. Sometimes they're uh, unable to pull themselves out of their mess up. So like the positive affirmations or just like the helping them to forget about that issue and like just focus on the present moment is something that helps a lot in competition, I feel. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Nathaniel. Yeah, so yeah, you got to have a lot of positive affirmations. Uh, you don't want your partner to dwell um, if your partner is dwelling a lot on mistakes, then you kind of dwell as uh, yourself too. So that's really important to really try to discuss and uh, talk, talk and support your teammate. That's kind of like the main thing, right? Uh, in order to uh, not make them dwell, kind of refocus and get back to the point. So that's good. Thank you, Nathaniel. Let's move on. So I think I have some strategies here. Um, you probably mentioned that. So here's a few strategies. So increase compassion, right? So we kind of talked about this with empathy, but uh, you know, you want to be compassionate towards your teammate, compassionate towards you know whoever that kind of wronged you. Um, find that compassion uh, within yourself, and uh, really use that uh, use that to forgive. So in tennis, number two, understand it's just a game. Okay, sometimes we're so competitive, right, that uh, we forget that it's just a game. We're just playing tennis. It, there's nothing, um, it's, you know, it's not like, you know, war or anything like that. It's, it's just a game. So um, try to bring the overall situation, the big picture, and just understand yourself. This is not, um, you know, a super serious thing, right? Um, look at their positive quality. So we kind of talked about this, kind of giving support, uh, looking at, uh, you know, ways uh, for your partner to help you. Because if you're so resentful, they're missing all these shots. Maybe they are just using their backhand too much. Maybe um, something's going on. They're just not positioned right. And you just have to position yourself and your teammate to be better. And that's all it takes. Just a little forgiveness, uh, find their positive qualities, and maybe you're actually going to win that match. And number four, know that they are giving their best. So I think we talked about this too. Um, as long as you're giving your best effort uh, in, the, in a sport, um, that's all you can really ask for. And if you're making uh, a ton of mistakes, but you're still giving that best effort, then um, that's fine. And you should find a way to forgive uh, that that effort itself. That is the reward. That is not, you know, sometimes it's not all about winning. Um, sometimes it's really just about the effort and, and try to know that they're giving their best. And I think, you know, with all the strategies that we talked about, I think it'll become easier for you to forgive. So at that heated moment where you are just, you know, your partner's just making mistakes, your teammates just making ton of mistakes. Um, use these strategies that we talked about to help you better forgive. It's not going to happen within a moment. Uh, it, it's a constant practice, okay? Um, and uh, it's tough. 
it's tough to do. But as long as you keep practicing that, uh, use these strategies, then um, I think you'll be a better uh, person to forgive. You, you'll be better able to forgive. So I want to bring up another slide. So this is Andy Murray. He's a top 10 play. Well, he used to be a top 10 player. Um, and he wrote, he has these notes that he goes into his tennis matches. And, uh, you know, some tennis players, we bring notes and we just to remind ourselves, right. And someone photographed his notes. Uh, and, uh, the top two are just pretty much about forgiveness and forgiving yourself, really. So number one, his top rule is be good to yourself. Okay. Um, you know, he's a, he's a type of person that really gets on himself when he makes mistakes. So, you know, this is just to remind them, just be good to yourself. Just be kind to yourself. Be that, be compassionate. Right. And number two, try your best. Okay. Try just give your best effort. That's all you need to do. And if you're, if you're losing, you're losing. That's, there's nothing you can do about it. But if you're trying your best, then that's it. And those are his top two rules. This is a, a major, this is a pro tennis player who's won um, grand slams. And uh, he brings this to the court. Okay. Um, sometimes we need to bring some of this, some of these small little notes to ourselves when we, when we go to work or, or do, uh, you know, do something, right? We're going to move on to Michael Jordan. Okay. Let's, um, let's talk about Michael Jordan. I'm sure most of you know Michael Jordan. Here's a quote by Michael Jordan. My mentality was to go and win at all costs. If you don't want to live with that regimented mentality, then you don't need to be alongside of me because I'm going to ridicule, ridicule you until you get on the same level. And if you don't get on the same level with me, then it's going to be hell for you. So Michael Jordan, obviously, is one of the best. He is the, I, I think he's the best basketball player ever. Um, he's known to be a ruthless teammate. He's known to be a very unforgiving teammate. Um, I think you can, uh, it's, it would be hard to argue that Michael Jordan forgave his teammates. Okay, let's, let's put it that way. Um, he had the highest of highest standards for teammates. There was no forgiveness there. At least I thought Th there was no room because they were going to win a championship and there was nothing that's going to stop Michael Jordan. Um, and I think Kobe Bryant was kind of like the same way. Um, you know, some, there's a lot of players uh, basketball players, tennis players, anybody, um, their, their standard is really high. This is probably at perfection level. That's their standard, perfection. Okay. And I wanted to ask you, um, would you work or play for these people? Would you uh, play for Michael Jordan, knowing that he's that way? So some teammates or leaders are unforgiving in their standards of performance. Would you play or work for them? get to play for Michael Jordan, the highest. Um, of yeah. I think I am willing to play with that kind of person because they always are pushing um, for us to be better and reach our full potential. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they don't want us to stay within our limits. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. So um, I wanted to ask you, Farah. Um, so let's say, um, say we're playing basketball um you keep you keep missing shots you keep missing your three-point shooter or whatever you're, you're just missing shots and uh, i'm michael jordan and i'm going to insult you i think you're the worst basketball player ever i think you are a terrible terrible player you shouldn't even be playing basketball with me you don't you, you don't even belong in this league and i'm i'm going to ask the general manager to cut you and to cut you and you're done. You're done. If you don't make these shots, you're done. Okay. Um, but what do you say? What do you say for to that? Um, <laughs> I know that <laughs> if, if they don't want me to be on the team, then 
uh, I would just find another team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's true. You gotta you gotta find another team, right? Um, yeah. So, and that's that's what you have to do. Sometimes, sometimes that happens. You're on the other end of that. Um, so that's good. That's thank you for being honest there, Farah. Um, any other uh, comments on this? Um, I feel like as an athlete. Uh, I feel like as an athlete, if you're like around this kind of like winning mentality, it can only be better like your situation. Uh -huh. like in the NBA, you have players like J.R. Smith and like Deion Waiters that are trying to like, um, that have like bad reputations and are trying to get into a winning mentality team in order to better themselves. Because um, I feel like, I, I don't know about if it's the same for work, but I mean, like as an athlete, I feel like if you could make it and, um, be able to play in this kind of environment and mentality that you'll be able to play wherever you want and still uh, like embed that high standards of winning into your uh, play style. Mm -hmm. and, like it'll only better you as an athlete, I, I believe. So I would be able to, uh, you know, uh, you like, I feel like if you have people like Michael Jordan, MJ, like even LeBron sometimes and like Draymond Green that are always like that, um, either uh, put it all in or like not, don't, go on the court at all mentality I feel like you can either use it in two ways like one as motivation or you can like just sit on the sidelines and watch them play you know because I feel like if you can just we talked before about like using like heckling and like all that kind of stuff as motivation and I feel like if you just think about it in that way it'll only better your situation yeah so that's good so thanks for bringing up that point uh, Ryan um yeah it's it's pretty much basically tough to not play for Michael Jordan right because uh, we all know he's a championship player, uh, super high standards. Um, you know, you, you got to be your best. And, you know, all of us, all of us want to get to that, that level, that very, very best of e anything, right? Um, but so, Ryan, so I want to ask you, like, um, what if uh, to be the best, you have to be unforgiving yourself? So you have teammates that are not quite doing what you need them to do. And these are good teammates. These aren't like bad players, right? Um, they're just missing a few shots here and there. Um, what, what do you, you're an unfor, would you be unforgiving as well as Michael Jordan? Are you talking about like, if I'm on the same team as him or like, yeah, if you're on the same team as him, um, I don't know. I feel like, uh -huh. I feel like I wouldn't be that kind of person, but then at the same time, it depends on like what level of play that we're at. Like if we're in say like, like regular season versus like playoffs or like finals, mm -hmm. I feel like I'd be more unforgiving if it was like towards like the finals or like the playoffs mm -hmm. rather than like in like the regular season. But I feel like, I feel like on a basketball team, there's only enough room for like what, or like on a team in general for like one like hothead or like one like player of this mentality. Because I feel like if you stack like a couple of players that have this mentality on one team, that they'll just clash all the time. Yeah, so that's true. Yeah. I'm not sure if I would be personally the one to be unforgiving. So, uh -huh. yeah, that's just like okay. how my personality is. Well, that's good. That's good that you that you know yourself, okay, and what you're, uh, what you're willing to do, what you're willing to forgive, not forgive. Um, and that's, that's very important to know. Um, so that's good. So I wanted to give you another quote. So he, he had this, um, documentary, um, or this, uh, like it just came out called last dance and they were talking about, you know, what happened during the championships, you know, there's drama, all that stuff. But I wanted to grab this quote, um, what, what he said. Okay. Uh, so this is Michael Jordan. Look, winning has a price says Jordan and leadership has a price. So I pulled people along when they didn't want to be pulled. I challenged people when they didn't want to be challenged. And I earned that right because my teammates who came after me didn't endure all the things that I endured. Once you joined the team, you lived at a certain standard that I played the game and I wasn't going to take any less. Now, if that means I had to go in there and get in your ass a little bit, then I did that. When people see this, they're going to say, well, he wasn't really a nice guy. He may have been a tyrant. Well, that's you because you never won anything. 
I wanted to win, but I wanted them to win to be a, a part of that as well. Look, I don't have to do this. I'm only doing it because it is who I am. That's how I played the game. That was my mentality. If you don't want to play that way, don't play that way. And then so um, he stopped talking a little bit. And so here's um, what happened after. Jordan then does something extraordinary. And I'm glad the filmmakers left it in. He asked for a break. So right after this, he asked for a break. He has become so emotional, near tears, that he has to get away for a moment. Okay. So Michael Jordan was obviously feeling something there. Um, what was he feeling, do you think? What was he feeling in that, you know, he, he, he said this. We know he's kind of an unforgiving player, and he has this super high standard for everybody. Even up to now, this is like a long time ago already, and he's pretty much in tears after what he said here. Why? Why? Why was this guy emotional? Why was he in tears? Because he's blamed, he but is, he uh, doesn't really mean it in that way. He kind of mean it to like support um, these people, but not really like hurt them. I would say. Mm, yeah. So that's good. Good point, Aja. So, you know, he he obviously has a love for his teammates. He's uh, he's there for support but he's, you know, he's trying to get to a place where he wants to be and that's to win. Right. So that's good. Um, any, anyone else with, um, what, what is, what is, it, what is he feeling here? Why is he getting so emotional? Uh, maybe he just like went back in the moment and like, he's just feeling like the passion again. Mm -hmm. And like, maybe he's not getting flashbacks about like locker rooms or like just like encounters with his teammates and stuff. And maybe it's like taking him back to a moment where like he was just like really passionate about the situation and maybe his teammates thought like different ways and stuff. Yeah. So remember that uh, when you're a player, um, you know, think about being a professional basketball player. You're, you're in there with your teammates all the time and you build all these relationships, right? Uh, probably sometimes it's even stronger than a, a family a relationship. Um, so there's maybe... He remembers all these things, the winning, the losing, the, the uh, just fighting and, you know, maybe the arguments that happen inside the locker room that we don't know about. Uh, so he's remembering all these things um, at that time. Um, anything else? Anything else on what he's feeling? I would think that, you know, yep. just putting on this, I guess, you know, face, I guess, you know, being tough and all that is creating stress for him as well. Mm. So after it was okay to break down, he broke down. Yeah. So um, that's a good point. So what, 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 is, what is he carrying then? Like you say, there's a stress. What, what, what is he carrying? Well, he's, he's, you know, he's, it's like being an actor on stage. So he has this game face. I mean, literally his game face on and his attitude and his leadership style. Mm -hmm. um, it seems to be very unrelenting. Mm -hmm. And it's a little, um, in my, well, in my definition of human, it's, 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 it's kind of off the chart in a way. <laughs> right? yes. So, it so that in itself creates stress mm -hmm. for yeah. him too. And yeah. it's the accumulation of that. Yeah. Just the accumulation, um, all that stress, uh, just to, that, that standard, right? Um, yes. he, he built it. He is the the definition of the highest of standards. Uh, even LeBron James can't quite get there. You know, you may argue he's a better player, but still, Michael Jordan is the standard. I kind of italicize something here. Um, where is it? Here. Uh, well, that's you, because you never won anything. That well, that's you. Okay, that's you. Okay, that's you, all of you. I'm pointing at all of you, and that's me too. That's you because you never won anything. What is that? Well, that's you. Uh, kind of saying that, like, you know, like 
because you've never been in my shoes, you've never been to a championship, you don't necessarily know what it takes, like what right do you have to judge me based on my actions kind of thing? Yeah, that's pretty much it. You don't know who I am, okay? You don't know what I've been through, the, all, that, all that stuff that I had to go through through practice, just try, trying to make my shots better, okay? What he's, what he's feeling there, what, well, that's you because you never want anything. That is pure unadulterated raw resentment and resentment towards who resentment resentment towards anyone who is below his standard okay anyone who is below his standard he is unforgiving he is um not forgiving of anyone who is just a notch below his standard and that's if you're going to play for michael jordan you have to be at that standard and he says at the first part look winning has a price okay winning has a price and that price um can take a toll uh on you and you have to be willing to pay that price so if you're going to be unforgiving uh in any situation whether it's a sports situation or um, a personal situation, you have to be willing to pay that price of pain to, uh, to, get, to get to where you want, okay? So you can actually be a very successful person, player, anybody, uh, by not forgiving anyone, okay? You've set a standard for yourself. You can be the most unforgiving person to your teammates, to every one of your family members. You could be very unforgiving, um, but there's a price to be paid for that. And you have to ask yourself, you have to ask yourself, wh what type of person will you be? So um, what do you think? If, if Michael Jordan was more, let me switch to this next slide. Would Michael Jordan still be a championship player if he had been a little bit, just a little bit more forgiving of his teammates? Maybe just a little tiny bit, just a little bit. a little bit to Scotty Pippen and his role players. I don't know. Um, not, not punch Steve Kerr in the face. You know, they got in a fight. Uh, just that's kind of, that's, you know, come on, you know, punching people, punching your teammates in the face. I mean, um, uh, maybe I not punch. Like, what's that? I feel like in the lock, like locker room antics, like it could have not been, like he could have won championships without the locker room like incidents and stuff, but like on the court, I I feel like because of the era that he played in and like all of the like you like there was a lot of other players that had like that kind of mentality too during that era in time in basketball. So I feel like even though his is like an elevated like uh exaggerate exaggerated like story, I feel like he still needed it in order to be on the court during that time. Because yeah. everybody, everybody was like, everybody had that mentality back then. Yeah, everyone had that mentality. Everyone had to, to buy in to, to Michael Jordan and his standard. So what I think is that um, I don't think, so if, if he was a little bit more forgiving, Michael Jordan, um, he wouldn't be Michael Jordan anymore. He would be someone else. Um, that's who he is, Michael Jordan. Um, so if he, if he read my chapter on forgiveness, um, he would... He would probably like be a, you know, he would agree a little bit intellectually, but he won't actually do it. You know, he won't, he won't be forgiving and he'll probably maybe even scoff at it. Okay. So as um, a player or you know, as a person, you have to understand um, what type of person that you want to be. You want to be someone who is very unforgiving. You want to reach that highest of highest of standards. Know that you'll have to pay a price for that. Um, and it could be a loss of friendships. Um, and, you know, he was crying at this, you know, he felt it here. He, he loves his teammates. He loves all the, you know, he has a lot of love, but he also has a lot of resentment towards people who are just below his standard. And he has this standard. He built it up. He's the definition of, of it. And he's going to continue that for, for on and on. So um, I wanted to leave you with this finding 
um, that I uh, researched regarding uh, forgiveness in sports. Okay, and I have a source link there. Um, early conceptualizations of self-forgiveness focused on the shift in a person's emotional state. Self-forgiveness has consistently been associated with less emotional distress, lower shame, guilt, anger, better mental health functioning, lower depression, anxiety, and a reduction in self-condemning thoughts, rumination, self-blame. Many of these experiences coincide with those reported by athletes following competitive failure. Thus, self-forgiveness may offer a potential route to reducing some negative emotional states and self-punishment when athletes' endeavors are unsuccessful, okay? So that was a finding that, um, you know, they, they studied this, they studied a lot of athletes and they found that forgiveness helps um, in regards to, uh, you know, all these negative thoughts that we may be thinking about, just, you know, like shame, guilt, and, you know, anger and all that. Uh, forgiveness is a way of really letting go and disempowering all that resentment that you may have for a teammate or someone else or for yourself. Um, probably didn't talk too much about that. There's a lot of unforgiveness that we have for ourselves if we don't, if we're not very successful in what we do. And so we have to remember that um, it's okay to forgive yourself. It's, uh, you know, we're human, we're not perfect. As long as you are able to, um, you know, maximize your effort, I think that's fine and, you know, find a way to forgive. But, um, I, you know, I warn you that if you are going the route of being unforgiving, you're going to have to look at Michael Jordan and his standards. Um, you can still win. You could still be very, very successful in what you do, but there is a price to be paid for that. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at TopspinAdrian and check out some of my other videos. See you next time.